how do you adapt stories? How do you adapt ancient myths? I mean, are ancient myths immutable? Can you not change them or can you change them? Well, as it turns out, you can adapt them. That's the point. They're myths. They grow. They change. And there can be many reasons for you to try and adapt a myth. And one such person was Ovid. Now, who was Ovid? He was a, a Roman poet. You know, he was born while Augustus was um, in the middle of the Second Triumvirate. It was falling apart and he was going to win pretty soon. And Ovid's full name was Publius Ovidius Nasser. And um, he wrote about myths and poetry. And he started writing love poetry, first of all, which is here. And he also wrote a couple of other works, um, some of which got him into trouble. The um, Ars Amatoria being one, which was kind of like a, a guide to seducing women to, to pique their interest, keep them interested, and then get rid of them when you're bored. Because, you know, as, as any pickup artist, you know, wants to know it's just how to do that because women we're not individuals we don't have hopes and dreams we're just there to be used i mean yeah loving that but um scholars don't like that interpretation they're like no it was it was like a, a treatise and it was kind of a, a mockery a parody of scientific treaties at the time and he framed it in kind of mythological terms anyway so it shouldn't be interpreted as that and i'm like However you want to read it is how you want to read it. We all read it in different ways. So that and some political shenanigans and um, having a little bit of an affair with the emperor's granddaughter who, oh dear, that wasn't good. Um, all of these things added up and he got um, exiled to the Black Sea six years after he'd published the Ars Amatoria. So, um, while he was in the Black Sea, he wrote a book called uh, Fasti, which is kind of like Roman festivals and things like that, and mythology as well. And uh, in that, he's got references to things like Germanicus and the Imperial Family Festivals, because they were in the middle of being deified, becoming gods. Religion and politics were really tightly entwined. But Ovid, being a salty, salty little troll of a poet, also wrote The Metamorphosis. And that's about transformation. That's that's what the word means. And it's in a lot of those tales, he's talking about how nymphs get um, ravished by gods. Um, and the ravishment is definite addition by Ovid, because in the original Greek myths it tended to be, oh, Zeus just had lots and lots and lots of affairs with nymphs, and it was all consensual, and it was all fine. And uh, Ovid went, no, I'm, I'm not going to make it fine, I'm going to have Zeus and Poseidon pestering these nymphs, and then those poor nymphs and humans getting victim blamed because they got the gods attention and Hera and Athena are going to punish humans for their mere hubris of this. So, you know, on the one hand praising, on the other hand doing some sly mythological shade there. And it's no wonder that Tiberius, who was rumoured to be quite into the Greek myths and really loved studying up on them, when Augustus died, um, Ovid went, can I come back now? Can I come back to Rome? I really miss Rome. And Tiberius is like, no, no, you can't come back. You can just stay there till you die in Constanza. Well, it wasn't called Constanza then. And uh, he died in AD 17. So Ovid got off lightly, really. He just got exiled. And uh, governments, you know, can't just go and exile people anymore, like as a kind of state thing. I mean, they can imprison you and they can kill you. But my point is, is that Ovid was someone who used stories to cast political shade. It's something that you have to think about. But it also shows how you can adapt stories. You adapt them to the sensibility of the time. Because Augustus's reforms were frowning on things like marital affairs and orgies. So 
Ovid putting in these explicit terms to to rape and non-consent kind of was pointing out that yes we should be moral but how can we be moral when you've got the very father of the gods being incredibly immoral I'll be using Ovid as part of my source to adapt these stories and uh, next up there will be cows and there'll be peacocks and uh, there'll be some um, pestering and, and victim blaming up next so um next time